Welcome to Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast, brought to you in proud partnership with JNS Accessories and Bimoto Motorcycle Insurance. Hello and welcome to Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast. We're still here with Leon Haslam. One thing that we couldn't talk about in the previous episode was what's happening for 2023. Now the news has been announced of Leon's ride for 23 and his plans, we can sit down and have a chat about it. Leon, give us a start on 2023. Where are we at? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a busy winter, let's put it that way. Um, yeah, we're obviously we're going to continue with uh, ASA with uh, four riders in the 400 Championship for the official Cowie team. Uh, we've got four riders in the Stock 6 Championship, again, uh, with, uh, under the Team Green. Um, we've also running a uh, another two-man Triumph official super sport team with the McManus brothers. So for me, that from the affinity, bringing in your riders, that's kind of where we've extended to. Um, and obviously the big one, which has obviously been a big task, we kind of arrived very lately to put it together, was uh, to run myself um, under that banner um, uh, on a factory BMW. So busy, busy winter for sure, um, but super excited at the same time. Um, obviously, yeah, it's... It, it's a big take on, you know, we've got a lot of good partners involved. Uh, Rockets come on board, we've got Completely Motorbikes, which is, to be honest with you, without these people putting everything together with all the other people that are involved, it's, uh, you know, it wouldn't be possible or I wouldn't even consider taking it on. So it's, uh, yeah, like I say, busy, busy winter, a lot of people to thank and what's super, super excited. Let's, <clears throat> you, your history with Kawasaki is well known. So from the, the 400 perspective, that goes without saying, doesn't it? But how did the Triumph deal come about? Yeah, honestly, it was, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to progress young riders and um, got to have the support of the manufacturers. You know, Triumph as a company are very united in the Super Sport Championship. You know, that's their main focus. You know, they, they don't produce other uh, bikes in other categories. So that is the, the main sort of uh, emphasis. Um, and obviously, yeah, I was super excited working with Rob from Completely. He runs a couple of dealerships. We had a link up there. We opened up the new dealership for him in Chester. Um, and yeah, conversations got going and, and they really want to support, you know, helping the young riders and obviously try and go for a British Super Sport title. <laughs> oh, Ben. <laughs> he can try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's another manufacturer. It's more competition. It only makes the Super Sport class healthy. It's fantastic. I think we touched base on that in one of the previous podcasts, how it's so needed in the sport right now is new new generation motorcycles. And I'm super excited to be a part of that as well, being on the Ducati um, uh, it's going to be an amazing year and there's a lot of good young riders coming through like the McManuses that, you know, are definitely going to be nipping at my heels, you know, and I've, I've spent some time with the, the McManuses and I think they've got a big future in the sport, a good racing family. Mm -hmm. And I think that's perfect for you mm -hmm. stepping onto a new bike. The next three years mm -hmm. is going to be very exciting on that project with you. No, for sure. You know, from my side, it's, you know, I'm at a point where I want to grow this, but at the same time, I want to have a little bit more say and control to, to try and win another title, you know, so I still feel I've got that in me. Um, and yes, it's a massive take on and, you know, I'm not doing it all myself. We've got such good people involved in this project. You know, we've got, um, you know, good team managers of all the concepts. We've got, you know, really good sponsors that are helping fund it to make it happen. Um, so yeah, it's been a busy winter from a organizing point of view. Um, you know, I'm glad just to start racing now and uh, do my, the bit that I enjoy. Let's look at it um, on a broad spectrum. You've, like you just pointed out with your Affinity uh, 400s, uh, Stock 600, Super Sport, Super Bike, you've got the, the whole range there. Sponsorship, um, how are you going to manage it? Is it across the whole board, different, manu different manufacturers? Yep. Um, is it an umbrella sponsorship package or is it going to be separated? Yeah, so what I've tried to do uh, from three years ago was try and create a platform to give more to a sponsor, you know, make it more appealing, you know, instead of just saying, oh, you know, I'll have a sticker on the bike and, you know, and that's kind of like what you get for two riders, etc. You know, from my side, it was, um, you know, now I can offer 11 riders over all the classes, um, you know, different manufacturers, um, you know, the hospitality that we've been building, you know, being able to give them VIP, look after them, um, you know, give them a wider coverage to help obviously the whole project. And, you know, being involved with companies like Completely who have a presence there, you know, they're one of the biggest dealers in the UK. I think they sell over 11,000 bikes a year, which, you know, coinciding that with the branding and the advertising and being able to look after these people, it, it, it is actually all working together as a business, as well as obviously from my point of view, it, it helps me to obviously do it all at the same time. British Superbike this year with yourself on what machinery? We're going to be going with BMW. Um, it's something that obviously is coincided with uh, with Rocket itself. Obviously, they're, they're affiliated with the World Championship. And uh, 
yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful. As a company, it's fantastic. You know, they're, they're involved in so many things. I think it's really good for the academy riders as well. Um, you know, we've got Charlotte Marcuse, obviously, who's linked in with them as well as a 400 rider for me. Um, they're on all the bikes that I'm with. Um, you know, the involvement of uh, what we're doing with Rob is a link up with them. They've got a brand new e-bike that's just come out. You know, they've got these sunglasses. And I think the brand of all the 10 riders and, and what it can offer, I think everyone's benefiting from, uh, you know, each, each connection that we're, we're giving out there. What's the link up with the World Superbike outfit? Because World Superbike SMR are sponsored by Rocket as well. Yep. Is there a direct link between both camps for you for this season? Well, no, obviously Sean's an official, um, you know, World Superbike team. You know, and so obviously they're sponsoring him. And uh, off the back of the conversations of Rocket wanting to sponsor my academy, it was the question was, you know, because we're doing the thing in Worlds, you know, would you consider going to BMW? And at the time. You know, I was looking at various manufacturers and things to try and do this myself anyway. Um, and it just coincided that, we you know, the opportunities and, and the availability to, to run myself on a BMW with the help of obviously Rocket and completely and everybody. It was, it all kind of come together, but a little bit later than I wanted, but at the same time, <laughs> it, it did all come together. How do you start a British Superbike team from scratch? It is difficult. You know, I think a lot of it is, um, you know, big outlays at the start, you know, you've got all the trucks, the infrastructure, you know, the, the bike builds themselves, where you're sourcing the parts, there's, there's so much involved and also creating a team, you know, but luckily I've managed to source some really good guys together and people who I've worked with all in the past as well. So, you know, I do know all the guys, everyone's got the same ambition to make it work and, um, you know, it's a lot, a lot of time and a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> How, sorry, go on. Ben. I was going to say four semi-trailers next year in the paddock. Yeah. How many staff members, how logistically like how big is this operation yeah i think i think it's 42 staff four arctics two seven half tonners and four sprinters to so get to every bsb essentially a moto gp team in british super bikes yeah. if you're talking on the sheer scale of yeah. it obviously spread across classes but yeah. four, still four crazy. classes 11 riders and um yeah it's um three different manufacturers as well under the affinity banner so you know each one in the in the categories that they're in but it's uh yeah, a lot of moving pieces and the hospitality on top of that, which seems to be my biggest pain in the backside at the minute. But, uh, you know, from from my side, of it, I feel like, I've, you know, we've learned a lot over the last few years. We've got some really good people managing each concept. And uh, from my side of it, I can step back and just concentrate on riding. That'd be nice. All in amongst a recession here in the UK, it's pretty impressive to see that come mm -hmm. together and probably sp speaks volumes for the sustainability of the team long term. Obviously, this is not a five minute project for you. This is... This is long term. Yeah, for sure. You know, if I can progress the super bike side and get a young rider alongside me in the future, and then when I finally do hang the leathers up, you know, it, hopefully that'll all continue and it'll be the that natural progression. You know, that's my my long term sort of look and, and view of it. Um, you know, it's hard in racing, as everybody knows. It is year by year. It is about getting the sponsors on board, and hence why I've put so much effort into create a better opportunity for sponsors and a platform. So. It's a bit of a no-brainer for companies to get involved rather than trying to borrow and beg and, and try and make it happen that way. Have you got your eyes on a young gun in your academy or in your program that you think big potential to step all the way up through into the Superbike? Uh, yeah, obviously every year we're stepping riders up. You know, we've stepped James McManus up to Supersport directly from 400s after winning last year. Um, I think Eugene's going to have a really good year, so I think he could be the first to step up to Superbike. Um, you know, we've just took on some really young 13, 14 year old boys straight out of uh, motocross, um, you know, and I like the attitude, the training and the mentality. And you never know, you, you've got to give them the opportunities and see how they adapt to it. But at the same time, there's a lot of young talent coming through. And, and if I can create a bit more guidance and opportunities for them, then obviously that's uh, fantastic. Who excites you the most out of them all? Um, if you had to pick one, obviously it's hard to categorize everyone you're just asking who's your favorite aren't you who, who excites you the most with the potential it doesn't mean it's your ticket to superbike no. many yeah. many factors are involved but the one, who, yeah. who really stands out that you think you know what this guy or girl could really go far the ones that excite me are the ones that are probably the loosest ones because they're not afraid to give it a go you know and as a team manager motocross kids i'm yeah, guessing yeah motocross <laughs> kids or just the mentality of like you know, just go a bit more, just go a bit harder, that sort of mentality. And we see a lot of it, even when we train with them in the gym, you know, it's like, you know, you can see if they've got it in, you know, when they're hurting and they just go a bit more and they're throwing up in one of my trophies, like, yeah, I like you. <laughs> you know, you're, you're pretty cool, you know. Take your first trophy home, yeah. lad, there you go. <laughs> but at the same time, then you've got to manage that, you know. It, you know, a lot of them, you know, I'm telling them to try and calm down, not push that a little bit more, because you'll learn more by not crashing than pushing too hard and crashing. So, 
I've got my manager's hat on now that's like trying to help them progress. But at the same time, I just want them to have a little go as well. So it's a, it's so a bit when, of a flip. when one thing that stands out, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure it stands out in my memory, is one of the Super Sport 400 races at Donington going into Melbourne Loop. Yeah. Um, Jack Roach and Mikey Hardy. Yeah. I think Mikey came from, I think he was still at, um, at Goddard's when he started the move. Yeah. How do you deal with something like that? Because that's exactly what you're talking about then is somebody having a go. And he was way yeah. back, went for that gap on the last lap, took both your riders out. Mm. So how, how do you manage that kind of incident? The management's hard because individually, if I was Mikey, I'd, I'd be like patting him on the back because he's had a go. You yeah. Know what I mean, I was like, I like that, you know what I mean? And but on the flip side of it, it just took one of my other riders out that's absolutely raging, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> and, and I've been on both ends of the thing. And, and the, what I always revert back to, you know, I could be racing against my dad and I would lunge and T-bone him in the last corner, you know what I mean? And I've it seen would, it happen. It, it, would, it, it would not matter that it was my dad. And there's no, like, you've got to take the emotion out of it. You know what yeah. I mean? It is a racing and, you know, you, I want to see that sort of fight. And last year, like say, we was one, two, three, going into the last corner three times and not all three of them come out the other side. So <laughs> it, it did happen a few times. Mixture of frustration and pride at the same time. Yeah, and you can look back and then obviously analyze it and have a conversation at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, that is racing and that's what makes it fun. Do tempers flare in the garage after the week? Always. Or during the weekend? Always. It's, um, there's, there's a lot of personalities. There's, you know, you've got a lot of dads, you know, you've got everyone thinking that the sons are best. And at the end of the day, I want to try and create an equal opportunity for all of them, you know, and, Sometimes it's easy to favor the guy that's doing the best, but you know, sometimes your attention needs to be the person that's struggling, you know what I mean? And that's that's what you we're trying to create an even sort of opportunity. And then it's up to them to, to try and grab that opportunity. You know, that's that's where it's at. How do you see the season progressing on the superbike? I mean, what what's the full team name first? What what, what are we looking at? Uh yeah, it's uh BM, uh, Rocket BMW, um, that's the title headliner. We're associated with, um, you know, some really cool people like um, Completely Motorbikes. Um, you know, th there's a lot of people involved in this project, which, you know, I'm so grateful for. And, and I'm trying to do more than just the advertisement on the bikes. There's a lot of link-ups and a lot of good opportunities for everyone. So, you know, the that side of it has been my main focus over winter, you know, as well as trying to get fit and be a rider. You know, it's putting that together, you know, creating sort of a package where at the end of the year, they want to continue. They want to, you know, be there and, and we've done a job, regardless of the results that we've, we've done a job as a team. And, uh, you know, if, if we do the job right, I think the results will be there. And that's kind of like comes hand in hand. Have you enjoyed setting the superbike side up? Yeah, you know, I've had, it's not just been me, you know, there's been a lot of good people that's been involved in helping me. And, and I've been wanting to do it for a long time, but at the same time, I've never thought it would be possible. One, not being able to get the funding. Two, not being able to get the infrastructure or all the little bits. And, it's just happened to work out that the way things have gone and, and, you know, things have changed several times over the last few months, but it, it is all, all come together, which, um, you know, I'm really happy with, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an ongoing project. <laughs> is it this a multi, a multi year venture with rocket or BMW as such? Have you planned further than just one year? Yeah, obviously my thing's long-term, you know, obviously some companies are on uh, two year options with myself. Um, other companies are, are looking for more long-term, you know, as a part of a, not just Superbike or the Academy, but th there's a lot of ventures with, with completely in his dealerships, myself, you know, Rocket as a, as a company with e-bikes, with in the sunglasses, the energy drinks, everything that they're involved with. So there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of people that can kind of benefit from each other. So from my side of it, that's exciting because I can see the benefit that they're getting. Uh, and on my side of it, I, I can get the money that I need to go racing. So, you know, it's, it goes hand in hand. How much does the challenge motivate you? Because you've got Synetic BMW with Danny Buchan, who've been BMW for many years. Mm. You have the official factory team in FHO Racing. Mm. How much does that motivate you to go out there and take it to those teams? Yeah, obviously as a team, you want to be the top BM. You know, that's that's a given. And, um, you know, coming in and starting it all in mid-December, I'm, I'm no illusions. It's going to be very tough, you know, and uh, it might take a little bit of time. But... I'm confident in what I can do as a rider and I feel that I know and I've got the right people around me to produce what is necessary. Um, when we can produce that and how good we can, that, that is to be waiting to be seen. But it's um, I'm confident. I feel we've got some good people and, um, you know, I've still got a few years left in me to try and prove my point. When do you get out on the, the full superbike? Uh, with the BSB rules, we're not allowed to test till after the 1st of March. Um, I'm aiming to try and get it all produced to do a shakedown um, and we've got a test early March, basically. Is everything ready? Have your bikes already bought and ready? And are they coming down from SMR? Yeah, no, we, obviously, um, from my side of it, we're, we're 
we're working closely with BMW. Um, we're sourcing parts through them, and and Sean uh, from SMR. We obviously can. He's got a few parts that we can work with. We're actually working with FHO, and obviously, and and obviously, and, and with Philip as well. You know, it's we we're all individual teams, but at the same time, you know, we're all trying to get the best for BMW and, and create a, the best package that we can. Um, so from my side of it, you know, we've got Terry Reimer on board, who's going to be helping out with the management side of things. And th again, I've got a lot of good people and, um, you know, yes, I'm, I'm having to be quite hands on at this moment in time, but ideally, you know, if we get the right people involved, then we c I can just ride my bike. <laughs> No, don't want to add anything. Yeah, you got nothing to I was to just going to ask. Go actually, it. I was yeah. going to. Kind of like it's a roundup though. But I wanted. To, I wanted to hear what's your predictions this year? All championships. How many championships can you get this year? How, yeah. how many realistically? Last year, do you I think got every did? single one. I predicted every single winner of every championship last year. You predicted them all. Yeah, every single one. Okay, for your team. No, what, for every championship. No, no, but this this year for your team. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're 400 reigning champions. Yeah. Can you go back and do it again? You, I know you, you've got some young guys coming on with not a lot of experience. Sure. I think the 400s, like last year I knew we were going to win. And, and, you know, we were first and second in the championship. This year we've, I've gone all new riders, not very experienced. Um, I still think we'll be challenging for the title, so it'll be nice to back it up. Um, you never know in that championship. It's, it's a little bit carnage. <laughs> uh, stock six. Um, I've got two riders that are staying on with me for a second year, and um, I think that they will be challenging for, for a championship, definitely top three. Uh, Super Sport, I'm pretty confident that Eugene will be also challenging for top threes. Um, and then all the other riders in those concepts, I think, will be in that fight for the, your fifth to the tenth sort of progression sort of thing. So it'd be, I think we'll be on podiums in every single category. That is my aim. Nice. Okay, your predictions for BSB World Superbike and MotoGP because we'll ask that of every guest we have on now. That's a good start. A good way to start. It. Let's like do a that. prediction. Let's thing. do it. Let's I, do a table. Yeah. Let's do an end yeah. year who wins. <laughs> I think it'll be similar in GP and, and World Superbike. I think uh, Ducati's dominance is going to continue for another year. Uh, Bagnaia and um, you know obviously Alfa Bastianini. Yeah, Bastianini. I think that'll be a head-to-head -head battle between those two. Pecco's uh, going to come out on top, right? I don't know. It's a tough one. I, both of them, it's my both podcast. Northern me. Smile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got a sticker on his car, by the way, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, I think it'll be a fight out on the Ducatis, and I think Alvaro will be tough to beat as well yeah. this year again. So I think they're, they're, they're them too. Ducati lockout. Yeah, I think in BSB, um, you know, the, the Yamaha has been the bike to be on. Um, there's a lot of young, new people coming on the Yamaha, so... Your obvious pick would be Jason. You know, I think he's due. You know, he's, he's been so close the last few years. So I don't think, I think anybody would begrudge him a championship. No, would they? and he is obviously more than capable. Um, is you know he could rock up at round one now and you'll still be fast. He doesn't need to think, develop or anything. So hit the ground running. I think Jason's going to be the man. Um, but new then, yeah. format as well. You took yeah. the words right out of my mouth. Go yeah. for it. New format with BSB. Like, mm. does that play into the hands for someone like yourself, that mm. someone with experience to chip away all year? Yes, if I was on a bike that I wasn't creating myself and <laughs> needed to get it all together in a few months. Yeah, but, true, because um, that actually now doesn't go in your favour. <laughs> no, because you can, you're not going to be. You haven't got those couple of rounds grace yeah, where you you've can got kind a pre season to get ready, point. haven't yeah. you? So where in the past you normally got three quarters of a year to get ready for the for sure. the championship. Well, Taz missed the first two rounds, didn't he, and still yeah. made it into the showdown yeah. and challenged. Yeah, but now every point counts. Sure. So yeah, I think that's from sorry, our side, but you our, know our, our, <laughs> our things that we've got to overcome. But obviously, Jason will be hitting the ground running. Um, everyone else is moving teams or manufacturers. Mm. So there's a bit of a learning process. Um, yeah, a lot of young riders coming through, you know, obviously, uh, Max Cook, you know, um, uh, Neves, you know, there's a lot of young guys coming through. So from, from my side of it is a little bit of an unknown from the new people. I think you hold hands of, um, you know, your Glens and your, your Idens and obviously Jason's, you know, all proven race winners on bikes that are definitely capable of winning. So you, you can't look past those. Um, from my side, we just need to create a, a stable platform and let's have a battle. <laughs> You've been on both sides of, of the showdown. Are you relieved to see the back of it and gone back to a more conventional championship? Or is it just you, you get what you sign up for? If it was... If it was a normal format that it is now, I think I'd have been three or four times British champion. Yeah. So it has actually not worked for me, the showdown. Um, but now creating this with BMW, I actually want it to be the showdown. <laughs> it gives me a little bit more time. <laughs> you can't Let's have it all, can you? Can't. You just can't please these Let's guys, can you? <laughs> Let's have some cake and I want to eat it as well. <laughs> Both spoons. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way. Um, going on to BMW, you've ridden for the, the factory team in World Superbikes. How different now is the bike 
compared to then? Yeah, obviously I've uh, been on the standard bike and BMW, you know, Ren Only has always produced an amazing stock bike. You know, the road bike is phenomenal. Um, you know, the latest bike now, it looks something out of MotoGP, you know, it's it's the, so aggressive, you know, the wings and everything else. So, you know, the visual side of it and the capability as a standard road bike is is undoubted. Um, the one thing that BMW have seemed to have lacked is, is turning it into a super bike to, to win championships. And I know that they're trying really hard and Scott and both Mike, uh, Michael Vandermark obviously are pushing really hard on that front. And, you know, if you look at the results of BMW and BSB at the end of the year, you know, all of them podiumed you know, in the last six races and at Brands at one stage, there was one, two, three in a the race. Lockout, so, yeah. So that on its own, I think it shows the potential of where it can be. Um, but then you also can't look past that none of them was in the top nine in the championship. So that is something that we need to rectify. That's something that we need to create a stable situation to actually challenge for a championship rather than just race wins. And and that's what we're we're all trying to do and, and everyone on a BMW. And um, it isn't through lack of trying. And I know that BMW as a company is uh, is putting all, all steam ahead on it. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll achieve it. If I remember right, in terms of BMW teams, you all have access to the same parts. Mm. So there's no, the factory team might get a better deal on them, but you can all buy from the same catalog. Yeah, and World Superbike allows that same rule in, in all the manufacturers, you know, whatever is available, all teams have, have, have access to that and price caps on suspension brakes and, you know, Motec in England is everyone's on the same. So how you manage all that and how you put it together and where you want it to be is, is down to the team. But the actual raw materials is, is all the same for everybody, which is uh, which is good. You know, it's nice to have. Does that give you a little bit of uh, free reign to swap and change what you want? Because you're not obviously tied... At in as such with factory partnerships um you can you don't like a clutch you can bin it and put a different clutch in or handlebars or whatever it is yeah bsb is very open in that respect um you know i think in world level when you're riding for a factory you're very much determining what they want to go and some politic political things come into that situation but in bsb you do get to choose where you want to go and the, the biggest question in bsb is is you know what do you need you know what i mean with a bike with that amount of horsepower with no electronics it's do you want that horsepower? Do you want it last? Do you want, you know, do you want the, a different setup? Because, you know, Wales to England is very different in, in that. And um, figuring that out to be a winning package, I think, is, is what you've got to do with, with the materials that's in hand. I don't know if we can speak about this openly, but what's, a, what's something like this across the board from bottom to top, 400 to superbike? So this is an insane amount of work and money. What's it take financially to get something like this to run for a season? Just yeah. so the viewers have a rough idea. And you might not even have it because you might have separate budgets mm. for each. You mm. might individualize them. Yeah. But roughly, if you had to think off the top of your head, so people can get an understanding of the, mm. the sheer scale of this operation, how much would something like this cost, if you can speak about it? Yeah, I can. You know, it is a lot. And I feel quite fortunate the fact that, you know, what we have here at the farm with my dad's dinos, the workshops, and, you know, the general infrastructure that we've created as a, uh, you know, a unit, a business or whatever, that saves a lot of money. You know, the fact that I've already got an hospitality and I can then cater for all my concepts, you know, otherwise if you was just doing a one man superbike team and you had hospitality, the hospitality is 150 grand a year, you know, where I can give the hospitality for free to the new concepts because it's already there. So there's a lot of savior in what I'm doing, the reason why I can do it and with the support that I've got, but even so you're still looking like your best part of like one and a half million to, to do all these 11 riders, all the different concepts. And yes, you all have the individual budgets, um, but also each concept's helping the other concept. So as a platform, it gives a sponsor a lot more scope because they're on four championships with 11 riders. So, you know, I'm not looking for a title sponsorship of each concept. I'm offering all 11. Um, everyone's getting more exposure. The hospitality is there. Um, my format with the younger riders, that they cover a lot of the crash damage and et cetera. So I don't have those hidden costs so that obviously I can budget a lot more clearer and easier. So... Yeah, it is a lot, you know, and it is a cheap thing of doing it. But again, that's why I'm so grateful that, you know, we've got some really good partners on board to one that they're going to be benefiting from it, but also that allows me to, to try and do this. Fantastic. Brilliant. Incredible. What are your, your realistic expectations? I know as a racer, you want to win every time you go out because that's why you go racing. What are your real, realistic expectations as the BSB season gets underway? Um, I feel that we can win races, um, how fast we can get to the point of winning races. Um, looking from the outside, from a BMW point of view, you know, some tracks it, it was capable of winning and did win races and, and has proven that. At other tracks, it, it clearly struggled. So 
there's something that we we need to figure out to maximize the package as, as everyone is doing but um you know the yamaha seems to work everywhere you know ducati has its tracks honda has its tracks bm has its tracks so we need to kind of like over a year, you know, on a bad days, not be outside the top five and on a good days, capitalize and try and win races. And, and that is, that is racing. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Ben, have anything else? No, nah, just, yeah. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast and sharing all that information. Really appreciate it and wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, I hope you can do a good job. Obviously I'd like a red bike to win the championship, but if I had anyone for second place, I'd love it to be you. There's a little bit of red on my bike, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Leon, thank you for being so open and honest, and thank you for sharing the news with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Leon Haslam, Ben Curry. Cheers. Another kind of round of applause. I love round of applause. <laughs> <laughs>